Hi, I'm Sabin Yakov. This presentation is entitled Answer to Inductor Saturation Riddle. In a previous video, I've posed this riddle. Suppose we have an inductor which is built around a nonlinear core, ferromagnetic core, which has this type of a BH curve. And we see here that this is, of course, nonlinear. That is, there is a curvature here as the core of ferromagnetic material goes into saturation. Now, the derivative of this is inductance, or the inductance is a function of this uh, permeability, which is the derivative here. And therefore, the inductance will start off with some value, and then eventually it will go down and down, depending on how deep we are into saturation. And then, if we consider, for example, a core with a square loop here, which has a sharp corner here going into saturation, we're going to see typically the inductance being uh, sort of constant around here, and then it'll drop dramatically as we have here a flat curve. Now the energy is related to Li square over two. So we have two energies, one here and one here. Now, if the drop is very fast, then it turns out that calculating the energy according to this equation, we find that the energy in this point or this region for this current is lower than the energy for this current, okay? Because the drop in the inductance is very large. So the question was as follows. Suppose we have a current source feeding an inductor. We move here on this curve as the current goes up on this flat portion, and then there is a sharp drop, and then we go to this region here, and as we have said, there seems to be a difference in energy. Actually, the energy seems to be dropping here, and the question was, where does this energy go? Okay, there is a conservation of energy, so if the energy calculated here is smaller than energy here, then the question is, where will it go in this circuit? So this was the riddle. So let me answer it by starting with very first principles, very basic notions here related to this subject. So first of all, we have to recognize that the inductance we are talking about is the local or derivative inductance, because we are talking about the permeability, the local or derivative permeability, I call it mu sub b, which is the local derivative here, which is of course changing. So therefore the inductance we are talking about is the inductance related to the derivative permeability. Now this inductance is a function of current, because as the current is changing, then the permeability, the local or derivative permeability is changing, and therefore the local or derivative inductance is changing. So the, what we see here is just a specific definition of inductance, the differential permeability generating a differential or local inductance. Let's now go about some very basic relationships. So let's talk about a linear inductor starting with Faraday's law, which is the very basic foundation of this whole subject. And then we know that V is equal to N, the number of turns, d phi dt. Phi is the area times B. B is mu over H, permeability. And we are talking about a linear inductor, so mu is constant. Mu is the product of the vacuum permeability times the relative permeability, which is assumed to be constant. H is related to the current by this relationship. And then if we plug everything here into this Faraday's law, we get this equation. Now, this term here, this term here, is defined as the inductance. So, since it is constant, mu sub r, the relative permeability is constant for the linear inductor, so we take this one out, and then we get the very known equation, v is L d i dt. So this is the linear case. Now what about energy? Well, energy is the integral of v times i dt. v for an inductor is n d phi dt, and therefore v is n 
area times DVDT. I is related to H. So if I plug these into this equation, which is the basic definition or the notion of energy, so we find that the energy is related to this product, which is the volume, and I'm talking about the core without air gap, just a solid core, ferromagnetic core. And then we have this term here, HDBDT coming from here. And then we have this integral over time to get the energy. Now I can express this dBdt times dP as HdB, which means that the energy is related to the area. This is area now, this area here, HdB from zero to some B1. Here, this is this area. So energy of the inductor is related to this area. Now, if we have a higher current, which goes to a higher B, then this will be the area here. So this means that when you go into saturation, in fact, energy still keeps going up, still increasing. There's no reduction of energy. And the energy can be actually calculated by looking at this area here from this equation. In the case of a linear inductor, this is again, this is the energy, and this is the equation. Now, the area of the whole square here is H times B, and half of it, because this is half the area of the total, is this relationship. So energy is related to volume times H times B over two, which is very well known, of course. And this, by plugging in all these relationships I've shown before, comes out to be this relationship. So all this is for the linear inductor. Now what happens if we have a nonlinear inductor? Okay, in this case, mu r is a function of I. I'm starting with the same energy expression, I times V dt. And I'm coming here to this relationship, A L, which is the volume, H dB. Now I'm going to do some changing of variables and change this dB to dB over dH times dH. This is a definition of the permeability because this is now a function of current any given point it's a different value so now replacing h with this term i am getting this expression and we understand now that this term here times the local or derivative permeability is indeed this local or derivative inductance so i can put this thing in and define L sub D as this term, and here is what I'm getting. So in this case, what we get is the energy is related to this derivative inductance. So we understand now that as LD is changing, there is still energy going up because we have here an integral. So even if LD is small, there is still addition of energy. And this is what we have seen here, that as this is, again, the energy, and as we go into saturation, energy is still going up. There is no drop in energy. So what is the answer to the riddle and the conclusion here? Well, energy is expressed by this equation for the case of a nonlinear inductor and L sub D is the local, here, the local inductance. These equations are incorrect. And therefore, this is incorrect. In other words, you cannot use these equations for the case of a nonlinear inductor. And therefore, it's a sort of a, you know, it's a tricky question. 
because I've shown these equations which are just incorrect. So this brings me to the end of this uh, short presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you find it of interest. Thank you very much.